I was always searching for that, but I didn't know how to put this together in my head. I, I knew it, that this life, you know, common life is not everything. It was life-changing experience for me. And I could taste something. Actually, let's say one extreme, I went to another extreme. All the time I knew I have a hole in the heart, you know, mm. and I wanted to fulfill this hole. At one point I really came to the to the edge, you know, like there was no nowhere to go anymore. I ended up in the jail, huh? mm. and this jail was actually, let's say, awakening call for me. So from that moment I started to change, try to become like closer to God every day. No, it's 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 a very basic, very simple thing, but it's essential for us so we need we need community we need each other and this is this is the first quality that is required to give you the strength jay good day everybody um today i'm here with taran chaitanya jay good day we are here in the just love festival and had a beautiful session yesterday and I got him the last moment, like he's, <laughs> he's about to run to the airport. But um, I think you have an amazing story also to share how you got on the path. And I would like to share that with whoever is interested. So as this season is about spirituality and plucked, how you got on the spiritual path, if you were always interested, what was like, how is a little bit your story, if you want to share mm. a little bit, feel free. But yeah, I mean, first of all, I was, you know, I was born in a family of just working class people who, who are originally from Croatia, but they came to Germany for a better life. Mm -hmm. So, so I was, I lived in Germany first five years of my life and then I got sick, seriously sick and doctors recommended my parents, you need to send them somewhere where is more warm. So knowingly that my parents are from Croatia. So they sent me to my auntie and uncle when okay. I was five years old. So I lived with my auntie and uncle for some years. So my auntie actually was my first guru, let's say, mm -hmm. because she was the one who taught me to pray every, we used to do every night. Okay. Every night she would taught me to pray. But it was interesting because my auntie was Orthodox Christian. Mm -hmm. And Croatia is a Catholic mm -hmm. Christian, so... Serbian? What? Yeah, she was Serbian. Mm -hmm. So she was teaching me that religion is universal, that God is one for everyone. Mm -hmm. So she was the first one who actually brought me this wider vision of spirituality. Okay. She, she told me to see God everywhere, try to see God everywhere. In every spiritual scripture, in every human being, whoever you meet, try to see God. Mm -hmm. When I was even a small kid and she told me to pray. So she was actually my first guru and I had already some small experiences as a small child, huh? like five, six years old. I had some experiences in my prayers. So I, I, I knew there, there is someone, there is something huh? beyond all of us. There is something which is, you know, beyond all this material world. And then I, I came back to Germany when I was, I think, 11 or something. And then it happened that my mother in that time bought a book from one Krishna devotee. She bought uh, some spiritual books. And one of the books was Bhagavad Gita. Mm -hmm. So my mother was also interested in spirituality and she actually got in touch with some devotees there here in Germany. And there, she brought me to the temple for the first time and the first time I actually heard kirtan. I taste uh, the food, prasharam food, you know, Indian food, something really different from everything. But in the same time, everything was so familiar for me. How old were you at that time? Like 11, something 11. like that. Oh. So I was still very young to commit to something, mm -hmm. you know, or to go deeper into mm -hmm. the something. But just a few years later, I went again back to Croatia and I met devotees there and I decided overnight to go to live in the ashram. Mm. I knew it, that that's kind of, it was something in me all the time that I was searching always for something, you know, something deeper, some deeper meaning of life. Mm -hmm. I was always searching for that, but I didn't know how to put this 
together in my head. So when all you these things... You didn't know what you were looking for or you knew what it is what you're looking for? I didn't know actually what I was looking mm. for. Not okay. really, not okay. really. I was too young to, you know, to somehow explain to myself what I'm really looking mm -hmm. for. But I, I, was, I, I knew it, that this life, you know, common life is not everything. It's not what it will make me happy, mm -hmm. you know. So when I met when I met the devotees again myself, I I somehow connected with them and I realized there is something attractive there. There is something which is pulling me so strongly in that direction, mm -hmm. especially the kirtan, the music. From mm -hmm. the first moment I heard it in Germany in the temple, always stayed with me. Always stayed with me. And then I I, I went to live in the ashram. There was no. I didn't think too much. I didn't really. You know, in Croatia. Yeah, yeah. What I age? It was like fifteen. Okay. Fifteen years old. And yeah, I went to live in the ashram, and that was, of course, that was a unique experience. Huh? Like all the discipline, waking up early in the morning, going for morning prayers, manglarity, uh, all these things, uh, chanting, doing your own japa meditation. It was life-changing experience for me and I could taste something different I could in that time I, I already could relate with this connection with the God uh, how long you lived in the ashram uh, it was <clears throat> I mean I went to the army when I was 18 but all together like maybe four or five years like from 15 to 21 to... something like that but then I was one year uh, I was one year in the army in mm -hmm. between uh, mm -hmm. When I was 18, I needed to go to army, mm -hmm. and then I came back. Back to the ashram. Yeah. yeah. So, but then that was it. Like you basically, for your grandmother, you got kind of the idea of God was already present in your yeah. life from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. You were always looking for something. You come back to Germany. You got introduced to devotees, to the yeah. Mantra. Yeah. And then you go back to Croatia and... You are set, or like that sounds like a it, it very was, smooth. It was following me all the time, but it was not all smooth, you know. <laughs> because when I came out of ashram, I was okay. twenty-one. Still, I had this feeling that I lack the experience of life, mm -hmm. and I had so many desires actually, okay. and I wanted to fulfill them, you know, in that time. And I was not spiritually so integrated and strong that I could just decide, okay, I will just live all my life in the ashram, I will mm -hmm. be a brahmachari, sannyasi, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I was not, not mature enough for this, something like this, and I needed certain experience. So from living in the ashram, I went to outside world, and from actually, let's say one extreme, I went to another mm -hmm. extreme. Mm -hmm. So like every young person, I started to go out, I started to go clubbing, uh, trying things, uh, drinking, even trying drugs, many mm -hmm. things. Huh? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I was going for this for a few years. Huh? Some years I was going through this experience mm -hmm. as well. So yeah, these experiences, they really actually brought me some joy, but brought me a lot of misery as well. Uh, because all the time I knew I have a hole in the heart, you know, mm. and I wanted to fulfill this hole with different things. In that time when I lived in Ashram, I was very happy, but still, you know, I was always feeling that I, I still missing something. I'm missing out something, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's why I went for these experiences, because I thought I'm missing out all these experiences, you know, having girlfriend. But then I realized, no, that's not it, you know, that's not what I'm missing out after mm -hmm. all these years. Mm -hmm. And I was really going crazy with all this, really, really too extreme. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, after all these years, I did many stupid and crazy things in my life. Huh? And I had really many ups and downs. And at one point, I really came to the, to the edge, you know, like there was no, nowhere to go anymore. Mm. And then I realized I need to change something. And then I made a decision yeah, to change my life. Actually, also my teacher helped me there. He was the one who encouraged me to, because I told him all my story. So I thought he will be very judgmental towards me, mm -hmm. but instead he was very compassionate. 
And he encouraged me. He told me all these experiences that you went through, on the end, they will make you stronger and they will help you to understand other people as exactly. well. Because I didn't know really what is the misery of this world, what is the pain, what is the, you know, all this thing that we go through relationships through, you know, all these human experiences that you have in relationships. So it was really helpful for me also to go to this. I mean, I don't recommend. Well, but I think that many people are, like if, if when I travel and I ask people what they want, and you keep on asking, what do you want? What do you want? Like you say, it didn't make me happy. So it's obvious that what you want mm. is happiness, fulfillment, no? Like you say, yeah. there's a hole and I want to fill up this hole. And I guess everybody, you, like you can ask anybody in this world, everybody wants fulfillment, happiness, peace, harmony, whatever they want to call it. Mm. But nobody wants to be consciously miserable. Yeah, yeah? for sure, for that sure. Everybody seeks fulfillment and the world just gives us a certain idea where fulfillment is found. Yeah. It tells us you have to look like that, you have to be like yeah. that. If you have this experience, if you do drugs, party, if you yeah, have yeah. Um, all kind of sexual experience, whatever, whatever yeah? Like, yeah, that is making you happy. Yeah, yeah. And well, we know that it doesn't make us happy because the Gita speaks about it. Yeah. But yeah. still, um, we're looking for it. And I think most of the people are looking for it. That's why exactly. I guess your experience is also helpful. That's why also I'm happy that you are here today to, mm. to talk about this because mm. I think many people go through a lot of shit, I would mm. say. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's how it and, is. And, and that there is always that there's always a way out like if yeah. you if you find a way oh there's always hope let's say like this there's always hope yeah i don't know <clears throat> i don't know what your experience were maybe you want to share something I mean, which a little I bit mean, yeah, that people can my experiences relate. were a little bit hardcore a huh? <laughs> little bit hardcore I, I i'm hesitating to to tell everything but uh let, let's be honest completely I went so much to this extreme of experiences that I ended up in the jail. Huh? Mm -hmm. I had some fights on the street. You know, I went so far from everything I was taught mm -hmm. that I, also association is important, mm -hmm. you know? Like in that time I was with my friends from the childhood who, was, who were quite problematic, you know? And of course me being with them, I was also one of them, you know? and. You identify, you know, you identify with your friends and so you do whatever they do. I mean, it's not that I blame anyone. It was my choice, you know. So I, I went to such extremes that I ended in some fight and it, it ended really badly and I, I ended up in the jail. Mm -hmm. And this jail was actually, let's say, awakening call for me. How old were you then, more or less? 26, 27, 26. yeah. That was the end of the road, you it know. It was like the, the pinnacle and of the your... The pinnacle of craziness, <laughs> you know, pinnacle of craziness. And I, that time I spent like five months in the jail. Five months. And I changed everything there. Mm. I started to, again, to meditate every morning, chant, uh, to have a, like a certain sadhana, certain mm. routine, certain practice. The old knowledge which you yeah, had acquired. Yeah, which I had from the childhood. Mm. It just, I just, you know, because in that time I had the information, I had the mm. knowledge, but it was not realized. Mm. It was mm. just information mm. for me. And uh, but I the had, seed was planted. The seed was planted, yeah, but it, I, it was not mature enough, you know, to, to give the fruit, Sprouts, yeah. you know. And, but I needed to collect this realizations, this experience, this kind of wisdom of life. And then it was hardcore. Also the, the yeah. polishing of, of life. Of life. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Also because life sometimes makes you really humble and huh? this life lessons, they give you this humility that mm. sometimes we need. Some of us, we need the hard lessons. Some of us, we need maybe a little bit softer lessons. Mm. Depends. Huh? But mostly we need hard lessons. Maybe not so hardcore like me, but you know, mostly we need life to like put us down, mm -hmm. to make us humble, 
But it's through suffering often that people start changing. Like yeah. it's really when you, as long as there's option where you can consider maybe I can find yeah. happiness there or maybe if I do this. Yeah. But if, if your <laughs> options are kind of exhausted, then it's either I go deeper into the rabbit hole or I start to choose to change, no? Yeah, yeah. There was For me, there was no option anymore, you know. There was no option. Either I just go completely in that direction mm. that just ruining, your ruining life. my life completely, you know, and or I just, but I had this knowledge, you know, the knowledge was there. So there was time to use it and to really put it in the practice. Mm. So from that moment, I started to change. Yeah. And then when I, when I came out of the jail, I went to my teacher and I told him everything. So I was looking at his face and I was really, I was really looking if, will he judge me now? Mm -hmm. Will we judgmental or no? Mm -hmm. But I couldn't see any judgment. I could mm -hmm. see only compassion and love and understanding. <laughs> so in that meant a lot. In that moment, it meant a lot to me, you know. And so I get this support. And from that moment, I started to walk the path, like, sincerely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course, we all have our human, you know, con conditioned nature. So I have also my good and bad days. There are all still ups and downs, but they are not so radical like they, they used to be, of course. Mm -hmm. So, but at least I'm trying. Every day I try to become devotee. I try to become like closer to God every mm -hmm. day, you know, with my actions, with my practice, with whatever I do, uh, with my behavior towards mm -hmm. other people. So I try every day. It's a, it's a new day where I'm trying my best, you know, to a new opportunity, a to, new opportunity to, to do a good service, to be a better human being, to, to appreciate life, to appreciate life, to be more realized because this is what I, what I actually, I came to this point when you, when, yeah, I often ask people, what is the purpose of human life? Uh, mostly we will say happiness, uh, because we all want to be happy, like you said, fulfilled. But on the end, purpose of human life is self-realization. Because you can only do this in human life. No other form of life is possible to do that. So just to be realized as a person, you know, realized as a, as a spiritual being, uh, realize your true identity, mm -hmm. but realize on many levels also, mm -hmm. you know, realized as a, as, a, as a man, realized as a father, as a, as a husband, as a, you know, like in many different levels, mm -hmm. I start to, I, I try to be a realized person, you know, mm -hmm. and so every day is a new try to learn about myself, to learn about other people to learn about life itself and about God, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, if you would have to give one advice or wisdom of your life, which, yeah, which, which you would like to give to people, you know, especially I think when people are in that whole seeing no light or no, no hope and like, being alone because like I see you, you you were lucky to have had the seeds planted to mm, mm. have like at least this memory from this life already that there is another way there is another path and then obviously it was also it's the mercy of God and your choice mm. because there's it, it is a choice that you take up your bow and fight that you say like yeah I need yeah. to change either yeah. I ruin myself or I need to change yeah. Because like Guruji yeah. always says, like God can do anything, but he will not force you to love him. That must be your choice. Yeah. Your yeah. mindset, that must be your choice. He will not intervene into that. Do I see the cup half full, half empty? Do I see mm. the misery? Do I see mm. the goodness? And I see that you have actually yeah, made fruit is different experiences, fruit is extreme experience. You have come out and you and now you're traveling the world sharing the kirtan and god's name everywhere and maybe whatever you want to share with somebody mm -hmm. who might also be in in a dark place or whatever yeah. or what, anything what you want i mean we all we all are sometimes weak and not able to you know not able to rise to the occasion uh, so we all have these moments in our life 
But what I also experienced that this, what I say, association is so important to have the right association. It's, it's like you see, like if you have a, if you have a mango fruit or avocado, if it's green, huh? if it's green and needs to get matured, you just put it next to mature fruits mm -hmm. and it will get matured, isn't it? That's how we do it. Mm -hmm. So it's same with us where, when we are weak and we are not strong enough yet by ourselves, we just need to find a good association of people who are spiritual, who are already walking the path. And important is just, it's the most important thing with whom you survive yourself. Mm -hmm. What is your environment? Mm -hmm. So I will always recommend people to create a, like a good environment which is supportive for your growth. Mm -hmm and to surround yourself with such a people. Mm -hmm. And then even... Sangha. Yeah, good Sangha. I think it's essential. Because even when they ask Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they ask him, what is the most important thing for spiritualists to grow, uh, for a bhakta, for spirit? And he said, he first he said 64 things. So they say, but this is too much, you know, <laughs> like how can we, this is too much for us, you know, to keep the track. Give us just something, you know, something. So, but then he said two things. He said, two most important things for Bhakta to grow is to chant the divine names and associate with other devotees. Mm -hmm. But they wanted him to really choose one. Uh, he said, if, if I need to choose one, I will say association with devotees. Mm -hmm. Even more important than chanting mm -hmm. because if you don't have the proper association, sooner or later you will stop to chant as well. Yeah, Guruji always yeah. says, if you have, if you sleep with dogs, you're gonna get fleas. Exactly, exactly. Like exactly. If you stay with saints, or devotees, and then even saints, eventually next level. you become one of them. Eventually, <laughs> yeah. No, it's 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 a very basic, very simple thing, but it's essential for us. Mm -hmm. Essential that we have a good surroundings, surrounded by good people who are really supportive and that we can really grow in that matter. Mm -hmm. And I would always, this is always advice. I know that in that moment when I was going really far from the spiritual practice, I was surrounded by just different kind of people. Mm -hmm. They're not bad people. Mm -hmm. Nothing is wrong with them, but they just have a different interest no, and they're right in that moment, they were completely in this material bubble, you know, mm -hmm. just thinking about this thing. They thought that happiness is to have a good car, a nice woman, you know. And Their stuff conditioning like it's, become your condition. And yeah, exactly. And that's you become part of it. But if you associate with people who are like who, who want to advance spiritually, want to grow spiritually, you will also develop this kind of a desire. Mm -hmm. And then we can grow in such environment, we can grow. And even when you are weak, your, your friends will help you. Mm -hmm. When they are weak, you will help them. Yeah. And this is a community. It is said, the Kalau Sangha Shakti, in this age of Kali Shakti, the power is in Sangha, in community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because in Kali Yuga, we as the individuals are quite weak and so we need, we need community, we need each other. Yeah. And just to, to conclude, because the Sangha, very important, the presence of the masters, like you said, your teacher. Um, and still, even though we are weak, the, the, the in general humans are, are weak, still you made a choice at some point, which means you need to find your strength. Like you, you, mm -hmm. you have to pull yourself up. Yes, God will help you, but help yourself and God will help you. Like you Definitely. make the choice. You choose your environment. You choose, I want to change. You choose, because often it is the sense of I'm a victim. I'm a victim to society, to my surrounding, to yeah. the, the yeah. circumstances, yeah. What would you say is an essential factor to find the strength of making the right choices and to actually change life? Because I think that always often brings also fear along because it's the mm. unknown, it's the, mm -hmm. like, is there something which... 
Uh, for me, it was just honesty, the moment of honesty. Like I said, when life, when you experience such a tough things in your life, like I experienced it, uh, you know, you have this certain humility and honesty because humility is the vision of reality. That's the definition of humility. And life, such a, such a difficult life situation, they make you humble. They give you this vision of reality. And then you just need to be very honest with yourself. And that honesty will give you a strength mm. because you will, you, you, will, you will be close to truth because you are honest. But if you are not honest, you are very far from the truth. Mm -hmm. And truth is the strength. And of course, we know the purity is the strength on the end. But to come to this purity, first we need honesty. Sincerity. Sincerity. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is the first quality that is required to give you the strength. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's, a, it's a kind of a beginning for all of us. It's a start for all of us to, to really be sincere, honest with yourself in that moment mm -hmm. and then make a choice. Make a choice from that space. And of course, everyone has his own choices, but I think if we are really sincere, if we are really honest, we will, we will realize that our essence is our spiritual mm -hmm. and that we need to go in this direction. Yeah, like you said before, the purpose of life, self-realization, it's like, that's, that's what I tried to explain. I was a friend of mine who is like working so hard and I'm telling him why, what you want, what you want, what you want. And mm. the more I'm asking why you're doing what you're doing, he says, because he's seeking happiness. Yeah. And, but where does this happiness lie finally? It is in that yeah. self-realization because every external happiness Exactly. comes and goes and exactly. that's not what we want we want something which is lasting exactly and that's when the spiritual path starts that's when uh, all the teachings the eternal teachings of the masters of the gita of the scriptures yeah. become yeah that's when god becomes so important no like yeah yeah the thing is that most of the people, when you ask them what is the purpose of life, most of the people will tell you happiness. Because we seek so much for this happiness. And we even, we even have these ideas of emotions, like we, we have negative and positive emotions. There is nothing like positive and negative emotions. There are pleasant and unpleasant emotions. Mm -hmm. Because all the time we want to be happy. But we live in the world of duality world where you have day and night, you have winter and summer. It's a world of duality. It's not possible to be happy all the time. But then how is it possible to be happy if you don't know who you are? Isn't it? It's a silly idea to be happy if you don't know who you are. So first you need to know who you are. And then eventually you can be realized and then fulfill it. Full of knowledge. We seek for the knowledge of life. Knowledge is already there, but... We need to connect with our soul. We can connect who we are. Etern eternal. Everyone wants to be young. Huh? Look what people do nowadays to be young. Huh? Plastic, full on. Just to be young. Look young. It's because it's in nature of our soul. Mm -hmm. But of course, because we don't dive so deep, we don't go so deep, we don't, we, we don't want to dig so deep, then we just try it from this superficial you know, aspect to look young, to, you know, to look for the happiness in different things which are mostly temporary. So I know that for most of people who are not into spirituality, for most of them, this is what we talk about is like a really something very far and not understandable at the moment. But I think if you are honest, uh, if you take really moment of honesty. Try know. it out. I, I would always say try it out because there is no other solution. Like if you take, for example, the Bhagavad Gita, yeah. the chapter one, the lamentation and, and the pain which everybody goes through, the only solution which Krishna gives to start with is exactly what you say. Firstly, you have to understand you are not this body, you are this soul, you are this soul which is incorrupt, which is this bliss, etc. Yeah. Before you don't 
even open up for that idea, you will always be in the game of matrix. <laughs> matrix. But <laughs> even if the greatest sinner turns to him, yeah. he must be considered a saint, right? Exactly, exactly. There is a chance for all of us. Everything is possible. Like uh, my teacher said that world impossible is only in dictionary of fools. Hmm. So this world, we should kick it out of dictionary, our dictionary, we should never use it impossible. Everything is possible. For all of us, there is a chance. We just need to make a certain choice. And every time, every moment is the right moment. Exactly. To make a exactly. new choice. Exactly. Exactly. All of us. I said, if I could make it from that space, from that dark place, I think everyone can make it. Everyone can make it. It's just... It's just a choice, right? Association, dedication, of course. That M many things which come oh, along I, with it. I, I but the, the first way. step is choice. Is a choice, yeah, yeah. You have to want it. You have to want it, and I said you need. It requires some sincerity and honesty. Mm. Uh, the, mo the moment of truth <laughs> with mm. yourself, uh, mm. and then anything can happen. But if you want to, like, really, like. Uh, you know, avoid the truth and <laughs> try to find some edges and corners and exits, then it will be a long, 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 long journey <laughs> mm. with a lot of, lot of suffering. But why to do that? Why to do that? You can learn from other people. No? Yeah, it's hard. We you could. Know? Yeah, we it's, could. That's, what, that's the saying. That's the, saying. <laughs> the wise learns from the mistakes of the others, the yeah. intelligent from their own, and the stupid neither nor. Yeah, yeah. They say according to Velak, it's a three three class of intelligence. Uh, like the the third class, the the first class intelligence, uh, the people who can learn from other people's mistakes, mm -hmm. it's very rare. Huh? Mm -hmm. And second class intelligence is people who make a mistake and they oh, learn something true. out of it. But then the third class intellig uh, intelligence, the people who make mistake and don't learn nothing out <laughs> of it. They need to repeat the same mistake many times and then eventually they learn. Most of us are tr this tr third class of intelligence. We need to admit it, it's, it's reality, yeah? But we can choose but to become we, number two or number one. At least number two, huh? <laughs> well, that's why you're also here to share your part <laughs> yeah. so that Anybody who sees that yeah. listens to this. Yeah, or uh, let's become number one. Why not? You know, <laughs> why not be, become number one? Learn something from other people's mistake. You know. Yeah. Uh, mostly, we need to put the uh, you know hand in the fire that we need that it burns. You know, yeah. if other people tell you no, no, don't put it. It burns. You are still curious. You yeah. want to put it. Yeah. You know, that's our nature, yeah. Huh? Yeah. conditioned human yeah. nature. But uh, anyway, you know, I just, you know, Krishna said that everyone is following his path in some way. Mm -hmm. So everyone is walking towards Krishna. But let's make this journey, you know, let's make the journey more, Enjoy. more, more enjoyable, more pleasant. Why to suffer too much? Exactly. We let's don't enjoy this leader. Yeah. Yeah. Try, try to make this life uh, beautiful for you and people around you as well. And I think there is nothing more beautiful than walk this path. Like, see, last night we all, people want to go party, clubbing, but we had amazing party last night, isn't it? Yes. All night was amazing party. Then after the kirtan, we had even like a techno party. <laughs> we have everything that yeah. you can imagine. Mm -hmm. We have the best food. We have the best music. We we have the best people. As we are surrounded by best people. Like everything mm -hmm. really... You can just wish for it. Everything is uplifting. Everything, every just add Krishna in your life. That's it. Live your life and just add Krishna in it, and you have perfect life. Very nice. <laughs> I hope you enjoy this session and go and listen to his kirtans. They are amazing. Yeah, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure, and wish everyone all the best. And see you next time. Rade, rade. Jai Gurudev.